Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And now my question of today is if Bitcoin hit 100k, would you cash out completely? And the same thing goes for Ethereum at $2,000, would you cash it all out? Or XRP at $5, would you cash out all your coins? Let me know in the comment section down below and let's get on with the video. First thing I saw was this article, which I really didn't know where to place, but I found it quite interesting. The title reads, he's worried AI may destroy humanity, just don't confuse him with Elon Musk. And the person we are talking about here is John Tallinn, who is an early investor in Skype, or one of the co-founders or something like that. And apparently, he used to really work heavily on things that are kind of against AI, that could destroy the human race and, and, and things like that. He's also been experimenting with that. He's also been, I guess, on both sides of that. Uh, however, now he has, I guess, backed, and I'm saying backed because he has been backing a couple of companies, but he's also now donated some cryptocurrency. And I'm saying donated on purpose here because it's not an investment. He just gave them quite a lot of money to work on something well if you read through this it, it's really kind of strange you know he just gave it to them as a gift and it's money that's not being used for the existential threat uh but on the more mundane risks of today's ai such as algorithmic bias and lack of transparency and data privacy so i don't really get exactly where this you know why this article is really important in that sense and stuff like that it also talks about i guess more of his investments and uh, the, the other side of the accounting nightmare that they had to go through. However, apparently he's just investing in AI transparency for transparency in this world, really. However, I didn't know he was heavily invested in crypto. I mean, if you're going to donate to a company and you're doing it in crypto, it most likely means you already have quite a lot of that, right? And I guess one of the Skype founders to have crypto is it's a pretty cool thing. Uh, at least in my opinion, it is. Then something very speculative, but I guess I'll do this one first here. It said, what we think our family sees when we speak XRP to them, what they actually see. And uh, the, the script here is, but let me just explain to you again why you should invest, right? And I see this picture in front of me then, if I, if I were to say something like that. But I just want to tell you guys that I'm never that guy to ever do something like that, to tell people why they should invest in something I might only explain what I have done, but doing this is 99 out of the 100 times just a bad idea because if you lose money, people will always hold a grudge unless you know how to explain it so, so, so well, but that's a difficult thing to do, all right? And I think only one in 100 times it will go correctly where you explain exactly all the risks and I guess give the person the knowledge that he needs to make a, a well thought out choice exactly for himself or herself alone. Now, on the topic as well, if you ever see some guy in the comment section say, just text this person to give you investment advice, or it's always going to be a scam. A hundred out of a hundred times, so please don't fall for it. Don't ever send any money, even if you think it is me, because if I were to ever offer something like that, I would tell you in a video. I would just straight up tell you guys over and over, possibly, or have it in the description, but never in the comment section. So please, guys, watch out for that. Uh, those types of things, those types of scams. And also, I'm not really a fan of telling your family about these crypto types of things. It usually doesn't go out well. Uh, it usually doesn't, so be careful. All right, then, especially, by the way, once bull runs come up and they're like, hey, you know, uh, buddy, I, I heard you were investing in uh, XRP. <laughs> How did it go up? Huh? It went up like crazy. <laughs> or Bitcoin. He, he goes to talk to you like that, and you're like, uh, yeah, I did. He's like, okay, should I uh, also put some money in? What can you say? You know, what are you going to do then? What are you going to do? Because if you say yes, it could be that the day after he invests, the prices go down because it's already gone up like 300%. Could also be, though, that we go to the moon and you told him no. I just really dislike the topic. This one here, I, I pulled up because I'm still worried exactly to what extent people put faith in this type of stuff. So, again, kind of a call to you guys. Do you believe in bearable guy one, two, three type of things or... Or not, you know? I just want to know from you guys once more, once and for all. Then, a really interesting part, Ripple. New trademark pay string points to new product. Ripple Labs Inc. filed a new trademark with the name pay string on November 6th. 
the community is currently speculating whether Ripple is again working on their release of a new product. Ooh, 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 that is definitely interesting. Jana Wontrick, I guess the league player, said, Ripple Labs found a new trademark application for PayString, 2020-11-6, application filed, same symbol as PayID, which was filed in June, same description, word for word, see pictures as for PayID. So, yeah, you can just, I guess, compare that to the official pay ID uh, description. Why did he cover it over? Oh, maybe this is the one for pay ID then? No, it's still pay string. Oh, here, okay, it's just a comparison here. It's word for word, exactly the same thing. A quick verification can notify or notice that. Yeah, 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 it all looks to be the same. All looks in the same place as well. Yeah, I'm just going to call it that it's exactly the same thing. That is interesting, right? Why do they want the pay string name? Do they want to change pay ID to pay string? Hmm. Maybe it's because pay ID is kind of confusing. On the contrary, maybe it is this, what they're saying here. Wrath of Kahneman says here, perhaps for Australia, why? Because, as I just said, it's confusing. As Australia already has some pay ID going on there, and in... I guess the US or whatever they want to make it now, they still couldn't get the name completely because, well, in Australia, it's already something they have to trademark. So there was a lawsuit that went on and I guess some infringement happens and stuff like that. So I'm guessing that that's because of that, that they want to change the name from Payetti to Paystring to get away from all this, this trouble, right? By keeping the same logo, same kind of, I guess, idea, not ID, but idea, I think that's what they want to want to do with that one. But that's interesting, right? That's good to good to think about that one. Then talking briefly about Bitcoin. Well, today is actually a very important day because if we go up for the next four hours uh, or in the next four hours and we go up like uh, maybe like, I don't know, 100 bucks or so, we're going to have another green candle, which would definitely be uh, rather interesting if you ask me. You know, it's been already so crazy, but to have three consecutive green candles would be almost out of this world. Uh, however, I think if this candle closes still above our our major support here, possibly, we don't know yet, at uh, about 15.6k, yeah, I think all is going to be golden, all right? Our, our earlier plan of hitting this zone have kind of faded. However, there's still a couple of days to go. Uh, I'm still not completely convinced. There's still, I guess, some ways in which this could work, so I'm still prepared for a move all the way to at least 13.8 or even maybe even 12.5. On the contrary, I mean, a, a fall like this to all the way to 12.5 would, would most likely get so much downward momentum with it as well that we'll fall down lower and lower and lower. As right now, I think the news outlets are starting to get into crypto again because of the consecutive gains right now and because it just keeps going on. Ever since this day here, November 5th, things have been going crazy. However, things are not or have not gone that crazy because the election was so heavy. Right, and things now have finally started moving piece by piece, uh, and, and and maybe re hey, look at that switch. Maybe retail will will then get in, I guess, soon as the news is gonna go berserk. But we just can't tell just quite yet. All right, as of this point though, as we saw with the keyword surges and the, I don't know if you've checked the news, you can also see that by just the coverage, it's not been there quite yet. You know, it's it's really not there too much, and you know, if you if you really were to honestly ask me here, I think the majority of the buyers are still going to have to come in. However, on a weekly basis, if you look from March up till here, it's just been a very, very, very bullish cycle that is looking to be very, very crazy and definitely breach all-time high. At least that's what it's looking like as of this point here, that we're just going to keep going on with those gains. But hey, sometimes you get debated. Look what we saw here, right? We went from about 3,000 to about 14,000 and, and then fell back down again. If you look at it from the bigger picture, it just looks like, you know, I just... I guess, uh, kind of an unlucky period. But if you look at this to this, it's still like two years or so of price movement, or at least one and a half, which is a long time. On the contrary, though, it still looks to be so early, right, since we hit these higher prices. And in my opinion, whatever way you look at it from, this is just the start of everything, all right? I think eventually our chart will have to look something like this, if you guys know what I'm saying, all right? Because look at this, all this price action here. It's, it's almost nothing you can see and i'm still thinking that stuff like that will be eventually coming here as well just with due time all right just with some time but eventually we're gonna get there look at this let's quickly zoom out a little bit to to see 
Look at that. We're nowhere just quite yet. All right. It's just the start of something way, way bigger. At least that's my thoughts about the situation. It's just the first couple of years still, guys. Think about that. Then here, an interesting thing said, why you should never hold your positions up to a certain point. Gains needed to recover from X loss. This is the ideal range for a stop loss, minus one and minus five. This is the point where things get difficult. Taking a loss here is probably ideal. As your, lo or as your losses continuously fall within this cycle, it only gets worse. Many beginners believe having a 50 or minus 50% loss, you would need 50% to cover it up, but it doesn't work like that. Why? Well, if you, for example, have $100 and you lose 50%, well, to get back to $100, you're going to have to gain 100% uh, of your money, right? And that goes exponentially. So they're saying, basically, think about stop losses, uh, I guess, for a little bit of a second longer, as the more you lose, it's going to be a lot difficult or a lot stranger to recover from that, if you guys get me, right? Losing 10% and gaining 10%. Could or first losing 10%, then gaining 10% is completely something different from first gaining it and then losing it. If you guys get me, so if you first have hundred dollars, you lose 10%, you're at 90. If you then gain 10%, you're at 99. If you first gain 10%, you're at what are you at 110? And if you then lose 10%, I guess you're still at the same thing, right? Uh, maybe I should work work it a little bit differently to get to the same idea. But you guys, I think, get my point here, all right? I'm not trying to do the math here. Maybe I'm sounding like a retard or a dumb frick. You guys get what I'm trying to say. You know, if, if you lose, as I just said with the 50% example, if you lose 50%, <laughs> I just messed up. If you lose 50%, it will take you 100% to get back to that 100. Uh, yeah, that's that's the point that I was trying to say. So you should be thinking about that. Here it gives a full freaking lesson about exactly how you should plan all this out and, and go for it. What I'm just trying to say is, well, DCAing is your best friend, but you should always watch out with how you do things, right? And if you're investing, make sure you know what you're doing and don't let others just just pressure you into investing or something like that. And, and think about selling, think about buying, think about that type of stuff, right? Think about, do you really want to get out of this position and things like that? You can quickly pause the video here and read through it if you want to. It can be interesting to you. Then XRP Fork Flare could gain support from one of the world's biggest exchanges. Bitstamp could become the first A-list exchange to support XRP's utility fork flare. Well, I mean, who really cares about that? Um, I, I think eventually, the last couple of days before the snapshot, most exchanges will be on there. And even if they aren't, all it takes is just a quick transaction to a different exchange, you know? So it could be kind of interesting though, if, if a lot of these bigger exchanges don't accept it, why? Because that means a lot of people who hold XRP won't transfer their funds, which means more money left for us. That's what I'm thinking. Then, world's second biggest bank embraces Bitcoin. Investors will be able to use the leading crypto to buy digital tokens from China Construction Bank. And by the way, make sure you press the like button and subscribe if you enjoy this type of stuff. And also check out the Growth Masters Academy, link in the description. But yeah, the China Construction Bank has now... I guess, opened up their doors, finally. At least starting out with blockchain and then a couple of things akin to that. I mean, we're seeing quite a lot of good stuff happening. And here, crypto YouTuber Lark Davis said it was yet more good news for mainstream crypto adoption. Yeah, I mean, honestly speaking here, there is so much happening as of this point. We got PayPal, we got China, we got a lot of things coming on for DLT. I think it's pretty damn good. Then... VeChain, Food Gates connects France with economic giant China. Food Gates, a job, oh, I want to say giant and global at the same time, a client, a global logistics and retail solution on the VeChain Thor blockchain has officially launched. The software creates an interface between French producers and Chinese buyers, which is yet again another very, very good use case. I'm very proud of them. We got that bin, or we got that in today. And Ripple files trademark for new possible payment service. We already read that one, though. It is about pastring, which mostly, most likely, is for the whole Australia situation, which I described earlier. I think I got everything out there. Yeah, just quickly answer down below if you still believe in Bearable Guy 1, 2, 3, or if you've really uh, gone astray from that in the comment section down below. Hmm. It is interesting sometimes, though. I mean, it, it can take a lot of work, but maybe it's something fun. I don't know, though. I don't know. 
Let me know what you think about it. But yeah, that was it for today's video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. I think are looking, I think things are looking pretty damn nice. But there will only be just one video for today. I'm gonna try that out for a little bit, possibly, but just doing one vid. But maybe tomorrow we'll get back to the normal. I don't know right yet. Uh, today my speaking has a little bit of an impairment I've noticed, so I'm gonna cut it short. I already messed up a little bit with the minus 10 plus 10 percent example, uh, as you guys have most likely seen. <laughs> so. I'm going to take it easy for a little second, relax, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow. And someone put in the comment section what I was trying to say with the minus 10 and plus 10. And first gaining, then losing is different from first losing, then gaining. You guys need to, you know, at least one of you guys must comment down below what I was trying to say. Because I, I know it in my head, but trying to say it out loud, uh, it doesn't work that easily. But it's also described right here. All right, thank you all for watching, though. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you all enjoyed it, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you again in another one.